Hey, what's up YouTube? So today I wanna to do a quick introduction into Decent Sampler. So in today's video, I wanna take this very simple music box that my girlfriend got me a little while ago and turn it into an actual playable musical instrument VST. Decent Sample is kind of similar to Contact in that it kind of allows you to make your own multi-sample instruments and that kind of thing and share them with your friends. But it's an open platform for pretty much anybody to make their own libraries and it doesn't involve any kind of uh, licensing and that kind of thing. So it's really cool to make libraries that are unique to you and share them with your friends. So these kinds of techniques are also particularly cool for taking a sound that's perhaps fixed in sequence or fixed in pitch like something like this or a kalimba or something like that and making something that you can actually use in a lot of different arrangements. And I would say it's also pretty much a rite of passage for sound designers. So I wanna show you how I go about doing this kind of thing usually. And in this video also just talk through the basics of how to create your own decent sampler template, which you can then expand to make your own libraries and all sorts of stuff like that. So what I've done is I've basically recorded in just playing this music box through its entire sequence. And what I want to do is just talk through some of the processing that I go through when I'm creating these kinds of things. And I also want to show you a couple of cool tricks that you can use to do this stuff really quickly. So if you have Isotope RX, I'd probably recommend using something like the Spectral uh, Denoiser, I think it's called, which is actually a really, really good tool. It's a little bit expensive, so I haven't quite invested in it yet, but it's something that I do recommend. That being said is there is other tools that you can use specifically if you're using Bitwig. So what I usually go for is a kind of a mix of the loud split and harmonic split. And I'm gonna talk through quickly the idea behind this. So with the loud split, what I do is I usually use this to remove FFT bins that are below a certain volume. And you can actually kind of dial it in exactly using these parameters here. So I'll show you, if you see here, we're playing the sound and there's nothing actually playing yet, but there's quite a lot of noise registering in that sound. So what we can do is we can use the slider alongside the tilt over here to kind of even out that noise pattern and then we use this, we can either reduce it or just remove it completely. And you see how we've completely removed that kind of, uh, any of that spectrum which has some of that noise coming through. So sometimes you don't get all of it just using the loud split. And then what I end up doing is using the harmonic split in the fundamental mode. And what we can then do is use that to remove, you know, sometimes when the tail hits, just a little bit of that N harmonics comes through because that threshold has kind of been triggered from the loud split. And so in that instance, we can actually solo this and just listen to what I'm talking about. You hear that kind of like. But with this, sometimes we do want a little bit of that enharmonics because if we remove it completely, it starts to sound a little bit too digital and too spectral. So in this instance, I said the loud split actually did quite a good job right up the front. And I'm finding here when, I'm, when I remove some of this kind of stuff, too much of the transient goes missing. So I'm actually gonna forego the harmonic split for now. And then what I wanna do is I wanna use a combination of a peak limiter. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just run through a couple of the low and high peaks here. And kind of just set the ceiling somewhere around in between the kind of lowest peak and highest peak. And then we can use compression to just bring up the overall level of the sample. Okay, so here, what I wanna do is I wanna show you quickly the difference that the loud split is making once we've added this processing. And you'll really hear um, why it's, this is so necessary. So especially if you're creating multi-sample instruments where you know you might have polyphony, so that's like multiple notes playing at the same time, having some of that noise spectrum coming through is gonna be a really big problem because when you trigger multiple notes, 
that volume is going to suddenly jump up. So try your best to kind of remove as much of that noise if you're doing this kind of thing as possible. That's why I said tools like Isotope Denoiser and that kind of thing, or uh, Isotope RX Spectral Denoise is really good for this kind of thing, but it's a little bit expensive. It is good though. Okay, so next step we wanna do is we want to bounce this. So let's say set the channel to zero dBs, bounce, post fader, and you already notice the sample just looks so much cleaner. We've got this nice even tail, none of that noise coming through. So what we can do is we can actually mute and disable that channel, out of sight, out of mind. So then what I'll usually do is right click and use the slice in place feature. And what this does is it allows you to use this as like kind of like a compressor, kind of like a compressor where the threshold slices the sample. So if we do that, you can see it automatically slices the sample into a bunch of pieces. We can kind of just go through and delete bits, maybe shorten the clips which are silent at the end here, kind of just clean up the audio track a little bit. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna listen through it and mark the different notes. So here, okay, that's not the one I'm thinking of. Sometimes you get double triggers because it's a music box and sometimes I'm kind of turning the wheel a little bit too quick. I think this is a double trigger. Yeah, it detected that though, but I mean, we don't want, because we want some of that tail to come through, I'm sure we'll have another of the same note, but we can also pitch shift the note using decent sampler and the way we kind of map uh, the different notes and stuff. But I'm gonna talk you through that in a moment. So for some reason that's detected as multiple hits, but we can just fix that like this. Okay, we might not go through all the samples, but what we can do now um, is start to arrange the different keys. So I wanna add an audio track, group it, and now we can say, call this one C, duplicate it, call this B sharp, B. So we should have 12 channels, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, cool. So let's put a tuner onto this channel. G Tune is a really cool free tuner. And now we can play through the files and just drop them onto the relevant channel. We can also just drop it here in the clip launcher and then remove it from the actual project. Okay, that's another double trigger. We can remove that. That just sounds kind of shitty. It also doesn't sound too great. Ideally, we want like at least two of each note or plus minus a note. So I'll show you what I mean by plus minus. Some of, the some of the time when we only have like a single instance of the note, I'll kind of just delete it. There's no point really. We might as well just semitone up or down a note that has more variations. And often just using something like a round robin or velocity triggers will already just make it sound more realistic. That slight amount of pitch bend is often unnoticeable. And here I will delete the channels that don't have any information. So then what we need to do is we need to go through these and actually separate the octaves, because here you could hear, for example, some of these A sharps were in a lower key or a higher key. So I'm gonna start rendering them out just so you can see the process, and then I will speed this up. So yeah, what I usually do is I'll select them all and say F, uh, uh, no, these are G, A, I, A, and so I will just select them all and then bounce in place. We may want to normalize first and then bounce in place. Then what we can do is we can double click and say show in Explorer. And then here what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to create a new folder and we just wanna drag these that have been renamed. So A, B bounce, we just wanna drag them in or copy them. But I like to actually just remove them completely. Now I know that that's done, do you know what I mean? So G, A, I, A. Those are all done. And group them and mute them. So now we can kind of like focus in on just the stuff that's left over. Do you know what I mean? So now we want to take that folder that we made 
copy it into a folder somewhere else on the PC. I've actually made, I've got a folder which I keep all my decent sample libraries. And then I've made a new folder in that one called Music Box. And then we're gonna paste this there and we can rename it to something like sample. And now we can actually close out this project. It's gonna delete all that kind of uh, information that we didn't save because we don't really need it anymore. And we can go uh, new project. Let's add an instrument and let's add a decent sampler instrument. So here what we wanna do is we wanna say developer tools, save preset. You can find that library that we made and just save a preset here. And it should set up a lot of what we need uh, to set up in that preset like this, right? Now what we can start doing is we can start, uh, this is a program called Sublime Text, by the way, it's kind of free, like WinRAR is free, so you just get a little bit of a nag screen. I definitely recommend it if you're doing a lot of this kind of editing in here, but you don't have to do this kind of stuff, you know? You don't have to do this. You can actually download a boilerplate uh, from the Decent Sampler website and just copy paste that and then it's got a bunch of like uh, knobs and stuff already set up with some effects and that kind of thing. Uh, in fact, let's do that, let's do that. Let's literally just copy the entire boilerplate, paste that here, control S and then reload. So you'll see here it's actually had an issue, it's trying to find piano samples uh, which don't actually exist, um, but it's also now made us attack, release, chorus, tone and reverb. So that's just a couple of setup steps out the way in terms of creating knobs. Sometimes it's cool to kind of do that and then copy paste these instead of having to refer back to the documentation every time you want to do something. Um, it's good for people who aren't really that familiar with coding and that kind of stuff. Um, anyway, so now what we want to do is go into this group section over here and we can actually just remove all of those lines of code there and then just save, reload. No issues, okay? So we've basically set up here like a template, okay? So what I would suggest doing is taking this folder that we made, copy and pasting it as, as a template somewhere else on the PC, just so that you've got this to start from every time and you don't have to kind of redo that every time. Um, but yeah, that's uh, neither here nor there. Let's go into developer tools, uh, preset editor. We can also just hit F12, that should bring that up. So here's where you're probably gonna do a lot of the sample loading. So let's just go over to the samples folder that we created and we wanna drag these over. What I usually do is I'll just drag the first one and then I'll kind of configure it a little bit and then copy paste it from there. Let's just check how many C's do we have? One, two, three. Okay, so let's just drag this just like this for now. We can actually go a little bit lower than we need and just kind of divide it somewhere in the middle amongst three. Then let's copy, paste. And then here, let's drag C2. And then just make sure that each one occupies like a different zone of the velocity range, right? So now we have C2, one, two, three, okay? What we can actually do just to quickly get things started, let's just shift these up all the way here. Just save this, music box, save. And just to test things out, uh, reload. Oh, that already sounds really cool. Okay, so to make things sound a little bit more uh, harmonically complex, we can just jump back into the editor, hit F12, and now we can start adding in some extra note. Obviously, because of the sound of the box, each note will resonate slightly differently. So to give it a more of a realistic sound, we might wanna have like the Gs as a multi-sample. So let's just go over here. We might not even bother putting in the F if we only have one low F, and then we can copy it's actually just do one at a time. And then here we wanna set the root note to G because the sample that we're gonna drag in here is a G, G. Okay, so let's save and then reload.
Oh, that sounds beautiful. Okay, so let's expand on that a little bit. Okay, so the A is actually below the C, this one. And let's set this down to A, and we can turn the low note all the way down like that. Okay, and just keep dragging them in. Save, yes, reload. And then we have I, F, and I, A sharp. So that should be till there. Root note F. We only have two of these, so we can go like this and drag that up like this. For some reason, there's always a little bit of overlap if you just duplicate them. I guess it's because the range is 127. So it doesn't divide by two exactly. Okay, so here you can see the higher one is actually weaker. We wanna swap them around. We want the, this one to be the higher velocity hit. Okay, and then lastly, do the A sharp. Again, we only have two of these ones. Okay, and then we can just drag these up. So we've got a little bit more pitch range. And we can actually drag this down as well, just so we've got some lower frequencies we can play around with. Okay, cool. Let's reload. Okay, so the last thing that I wanna show you today is how to change up the reverb settings a little bit. So say for example, we want the room size a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna show you the quick method in this video, but let me know in the comments if you want more decent sampler tutorials. I can show you a bunch of the UI stuff. Um, I've actually been working on a couple of more advanced libraries. I can show you a bunch of like how to change sample mappings and stuff using uh, UI components. We can actually link up one of these knobs to the room size and that kind of thing. But I'm gonna save that for a future video if you guys can even just figure that out using the documentation. But just for now, say for example, we want a big reverb. Let's just set this to, uh, we type in room size, room size equals then in quotes, we wanna put something like anything between zero and one. That's gonna be the parameter for the room size. So, I mean, just to keep things simple, I'm just gonna make it full size. And let's go uh, reload and then check it out what it sounds like. Okay, that's about it for today. I'll upload this pretty basic thing to my uh, Patreon for my $5 supporters. But like I said, if you want more stuff, we can actually work on this a little bit further in future tutorials, like episode two, three, et cetera. Um, and then I'll just kind of keep re-uploading it as we develop it further. Um, yeah, let me know if you want more decent sampler stuff. I'm totally keen to do that kind of thing because I'm actually getting pretty into it these days. And the platform is evolving pretty well. You know, since I've been following it, they've added quite a few new features. Uh, one of my favorite things is actually impulse response, and I'll show you guys why in a future video. But anyway, let me know your thoughts and hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.